Welcome to Girls Guts Glory, the broadcast. Previously on the broadcast, you can put a tattoo on your body, but I want to tattoo your heart. Where are you going? I, I gotta go heal him. He, he's hurt real bad. Should we go after Trinity then? Yes. And we start running towards our friends. You guys caught uh, specifically Wrecked and Huck, as well as uh, you, Brute, that all of that Trinity fandom that had been sitting around the southernmost corner around here all leaped into the main hall and started dashing for it. Huck pointed in the direction of the uh, abjuration school in the back corner and just said that way, and then ran in the opposite direction at the front door. So. I'm um, going to walk over to Celine. Yes, you guys quickly all gathered. I mean, you already seen Celine and Drusilda running towards you. You see Starla a little bit further away, kind of meandering through the crowd and running towards you guys as well, and you all meet mm-hmm. up. I am um, going to take the light enchantment off all of our hair. Okay, you drop it. Mm-hmm. So we're not quite so um, conspicuous. Conspicuous. <laughs> and people start to go back to the fair as if nothing strange to happen. You can catch that special hops down and is like saying hello to her adoring fans. But Kovalt uh, quickly walks down the stairs, says hello to some friends that he plays with, a uh, magic ball with, and then walks walks away. Did no one find it kind of strange that when the sun came out, all of Trinity's posse and Trinity oh, herself yes. flew the coop? Should we go investigate? wonder. I think we should follow them. Yes. Let's because do it. If but they are stealthily. vampires, we can all... Uh... Oh, shoot. Who had the radiation... The, ra- the radiant, radiant light? The radiant light bottle. That was... Huck? Huck. Mm. Oh. That's, okay, never mind. But we should still follow them. Mm-hmm. Alright. So, you guys kind of hop into the hallway, look in the direction that Huck had pointed in, and begin to kind of would you like to stealthily walk towards them, or do you guys want yes. to run full fl- force oh, in the direction of stealth. stealth? Then can I please get a stealth check from the four of you? Thank you. Oh, Reckon's gonna join you. Reckon's like, yeah, that was weird. I'm gonna follow you guys. I'm not stealthy. I rolled a one again, but luckily I have the lucky feet <laughs> yet again. This happens so often. <laughs> 22 for for root. Nice. Do you want to try a different dice, Ken? Yes. <laughs> I've, I've run out of good dice. I rolled a six. 6, 28, 22 from Peru. 9. 18. 9 oh, and 18. Sorry, 10. 10. Okay, so not the best rolls. Um, Wreck-It only rolled a 12. So you guys are keeping quiet. Fruit most distinctly keeping quiet. You guys feel like you're not raising suspicion, but that if you continue the way moving forward that you are, you could, uh, if you don't slow down uh, your speed and kind of keep cool, there's a chance that people might realize that you're trailing them. So a moment passes as you guys successfully at least walk through this main hall and get to the dormitory of abjuration, the school of Ab- abjuration, which is the school that has the s- sort of flags and colors of uh, red and gray, sort of this like um, uh, dance of color um, as you guys walk forward. And the prefix standing there, kind of looking upset that they missed the fair, but, uh, kind of leaning against the wall, <clears throat> this girl who like has her arms crossed and sees all of you walk forward. Divination school? Yes. Why would you want, why? Why would you come to the dormitory for abjuration? There's a fair going on. Yeah, but we saw Trinity, she looked really upset, run in here and we thought we might be able to give her, you know, like a little a bit of encouragement. Kind word or a or a shoulder, shoulder to cry on, you and know? And then Wreckit kind of stands forward, and he's like, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, I think... We thought she might have been intimidated because Wreckit had such a beautiful display that, you know... We just wanted to make sure that she is all right, and we wanted to offer our friendship. All right, so with that, you guys all kind of pointing to Wreckit, being like, you know, he was on stage with her, she ran off crying, we didn't know what was happening. Uh, I'm going to have Wreckit... A roll with advantage from all of your kind of implorements to try to persuade this girl. Nat 20. 
Oh, so, Beckett is killing it. Yep. Well, Beckett I think he didn't it. say much, but it was the four of you all feathered out behind him, uh, <laughs> <laughs> describing in detail the how upset Trinity was, how she didn't get her moment to shine. She didn't even say her speech. She, some of her effects just went off, and then she ran. So, mm. so like, and as you're painting this picture, you can see this girl, this prefect, like slowly getting whittled away about hearing the description of how fun this fair sounds, how everybody's there. You f you can tell she has major FOMO. So you're kind of like eating into that. Insecurity. You should really be good. The Ferris wheel is so much fun. And the best part, zero calorie cotton candy. No. Cotton yes. candy. No. And it is so good. It tastes divine. It disappears in your mouth. Well, I can't leave my spot. You can, I'll, I'll cover it. for you. We'll cover for you. You'll cover for me? Go, Thank you. go get some cotton yeah, candy. If you, if you walk and into the, to the main area to the right, there are extra robes. If you need to like, you know, just throw it on, pretend you're abjuration or something. Perfect, All right, thank, thank you, you so much. Have fun, and yes, enjoy. enjoy. Yeah, thanks, okay. And she just like, kind of scurries down the hall, very excited, like cl clicking her feet. Let's get um, those robes. <laughs> um, so you guys are able to enter the dormitory, which is vacant. I mean, everybody is at this fair and this festival, even though the main kind of um, speech uh, event happened. You know that the the activities are still going on. The the f cotton candy is still being made. Are the any of her going. any of Trinity's posse still lingering around? Yeah, you all walk into this very large circular room. Once again, that sort of like uh, commons area with all those very plush sort of robes. Here, though, it's kind of funny. The abjuration school is kind of the school for again people who just want to skirt by the mediocre school. So there's not as many bookshelves. Um, here, there's like a, a, the equivalent of a magic foosball, um, <laughs> like a magic foosball table. Uh, they have a fireplace that's like kind of burning. Everything's just a little le more uh, lackluster and not as getting much attention or love. It's a it's a lot more of a classic dormitory vibe here. The the have no style either. <laughs> no style whatsoever. Oh. Um, as you look through this and you pull out one of the sort of red, uh, red gray robes that looks just Can I just pass drab. them to everyone? Do yes. I find enough? You do so. Okay. You all find the ones that could fit you here. As you begin to look around as Juzilda is grabbing these robes, can I have you roll a perception check for you? Mm -hmm. 20. Okay. Nat 20 or unnatural? Dirty. Okay. You take a moment, your eyes, your ears perk up. I don't have ears. You don't have ears? I'm a bird. Birds have ears. They actually have them hidden beneath their feathers and their indents on either side of their face. It's fascinating. Okay, yes, but I don't have ears. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Let me be perfect. specific. You have sound receptors. I have sound receptors. <laughs> I don't have ears. Sound receptors. Okay, your sound receptor. <laughs> Pick up. Um, that there is some sort of stirring and you hear like a, like a door closing somewhere in the distance. Now, not in this room, somewhere up. Um, you feel like it's from the top, like, top corner. You probably have to walk up about three flights of stairs in order to get to it. Um, or fly. Or fly. But you, your, your face and your, your head just juts up in that direction as you hear it. Mm -hmm. Door close in the distance. I don't know if I want to follow any of these leads. Do we want to see if perhaps any of these creatures are vampires? I mean, we should definitely try to find where these you know where these get where these this group has gone you know mm -hmm. i mean wouldn't that be the reason that they would they would flee once the sun came yeah, out and didn't, oh, yes. uh, wait out of character didn't didn't uh huck hear trinity talking about being a vampire yes you and both did don't you remember that there was kind of this like moment that you guys eavesdropped and you overheard her talking about how cool it is and how big those parties were and how she she doesn't have to sleep anymore like she was saying a lot of things that sounded familiar to the ailments that Celine had gone through yeah when you and Huck were in the cafeteria and some of those kids she was talking to were kids that you had seen mm -hmm. the night previous in the ground so, we, so, so she's we a godwiss and she's a vampire so clearly, we should take her out. We've got to take her out. She must die. <laughs> or we could try to restore her soul or something. <laughs> no, she. I'm just kidding. We're gonna kill her. I have to restore her soul. She has no soul worth restoring. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right. So wait, wait, wait. 
You can't just blindly just no. charge into battle. I mean, we did just Calm make friends feathers. with her. Technically, we just made friends with her. And oh, yeah, I, I think we might, it might behoove us to gather a bit more information, maybe from some of her friends. Who are also probably vampires. Who are also most, more than likely vampires. If they ran from the sun like that, I'm gonna go ahead and say vampire. Because out loud, and would you, we? And you also caught that all of her friends, well, from Hux pointing a quick description, everybody who dipped out with her were all they were all running towards the school. They were all running in this direction. Uh, I would like to go. Did we say we we heard something down the hall? Up, uh, upstairs. Yeah, upstairs. three stories high, like the top corner. Fruit would be able to point you in the exact direction. That Let's go see. investigate. Let's go investigate. Do you want to fly up with me? I would like to, yes. I'll sneak up behind you. Okay. I'll you can start. climb on my back. Oh, okay. I was gonna take out my daggers oh, as well. Are you talking so about just... flying up outside or just no up up? Yes. yes. Instead of using the staircases, you know who needs staircases oh, when you fly? Maybe faster. Sure. I don't know. <laughs> Why not? I've right. got little legs. Oh, okay. <laughs> so whoever you can carry, which I it's usually only one person. Uh, you. How about Celine, I Celine, guess? Celine, yes. And, and you moved quickly, Starla and Drusilda. The two of you kind of scurry up the staircases in a kind of a race. Um, uh, <laughs> hell, why not? Athletics checks from both of you guys. Oh, no. Uh, that's my worst one. <laughs> yeah. uh, just from Farouk, because you're carrying. Oh. Oh, okay. I actually would like this to be a strength check from you, Farouk. Strength. Am I strong? And uh, Starla and uh, Drusilda, what did you guys get? Oh. I, got, um. I forgot what I rolled. I either got, um, I either got, it was either a 10 or a 9. It 12. Wasn't 12? All right, it's so evenly matched, and it's like, you guys are kind of racing, but not, and it's it's pretty much evenly matched, but Farouk just gets there a little bit ahead of time with Celine, uh, mm. as the two of you guys kind of run up to the door that you were pointing at. I'm going to take out both of my daggers. Just have them running. Okay. Um, I want to try and listen. Yes, we're all going to be more As quiet. you guys now approach the direction where you saw the door, uh, or at least heard the door noise from, the door is actually slightly open, like an inch. Like it's kind of, like they didn't fully close it, they forgot to. Um, you guys all lean in. Who's at the door listening in? Very, maybe My one sound of you, receptor or? is very close to the... Okay, so I, essentially <laughs> one person should make this check. Um, I will give you advantage just because all four of you are assisting. So who would like to make this investigation check? You go ahead, Farouk. Yeah, mm-hmm. Investigation. Mm-hmm. Alright. Come on, invest. Oh, wow. <laughs> very good at all. With advantage. Roll again. Oh. Advantage. Better be yes. better. A little better. Let's see. That's going to be a 12. A 12, okay. You cannot hear anything on the inside. <sighs> Silent. I don't hear a thing. Y'all want me to try and sneak in? Yeah. Yeah, we're right behind you, Yell, if you need us. Okay. Wait. What? I'm gonna give you guidance. Oh, thank you. Okay, so Celine's hand goes on your back. You feel a surge of guidance. Can I please have you roll a stealth check as you begin to walk in? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a nat 20. Nat Ooh. 20? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't need my guidance. <laughs> Maybe for something else. <laughs> Slowly walk in. You can kind of slither in almost. It's completely pitch black. Completely dark in here. There's... Definitely windows, but the windows are covered. There in this dormitory um, are about four beds. You take a moment, you look around very, very quickly. None of these beds look like they have been used. They are perfectly pristine. It's an interesting thing. There's nobody in here. But with an at 20, as you take a couple steps in, you swear on the leftmost bed in the distance. There's two beside you. Mm-hmm. Two on the other side, and there's kind of um, some dressers that kind of divide the room to give privacy and anything in the sort of shared experience. But in the far left corner, you swear you hear a noise that is like in the distance, and you catch that, but you don't see anything. Mm. I'm gonna sort of like lean to the to the door, and as quiet as quietly as I can. Uh, it's really quiet, but I think I heard something in the left corner. Far left corner. So maybe we should all just get inside and then okay. just be ready. Drizelda tiptoes in. 
Okay, so everybody follows? All right, so can I please have the of... rest of you roll a stealth check? Should one of us stay outside to keep watch at the door? I think we'd better stay together. We should okay. probably have each other's back. Okay. I will give the three of you advantage because Starla rolled on at 20. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like that what face, face. What a face. <laughs> 14. <laughs> 20. Nice. Yeah. Was that on the die I gave you? Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's sparkly like Celine. 19. Yeah, you guys all walk in like you're floating on air following Starless lead. You definitely feel like your source of kind of um, tracking here is not far behind, especially since you had recently heard that. So staying quiet, at least for now, is really helping you guys not be found. Um, and you begin to tiptoe your way in. You walk past some beds that look like they haven't been touched. It's an interesting room. It's almost like a, a room that you would first move into. So it's hard to exactly gauge um, who might who the, whose dormitory this might be, or it might be an empty dormitory that they ran into. Because it looks like something's made for freshmen, essentially, to walk into. Very strange. Where, where's the sound? Where did it come from? The far left corner. Mm. Can anyone see in the dark? I mm-hmm. can. Okay, great. I can't. What do we see? You guys, um, so I would like the two of you, let's have Celine and Drizilda roll an investigation check, please. 19. Nice. 17. 17. Okay, you guys walk forward, and you guys are looking for anything that looks abnormal. Um... This room is fairly bereft of clothes, anything distinguishing whose room this might be. The beds don't look like they've been touched. But each one of these beds have um, have like a dresser next to them and an armoire and a vanity. It's like a very simple, small little area. No bookshelves because this is after Asian. Nobody stays here. Um, on the other <laughs> side, um, you catch on the left-hand bed right next to it, um, there's this really beautiful armoire. And it looks ever so slightly like an inch more forward than every other armoire that is flushed against the wall perfectly. Drizilda points at the armoire to Farut and Starla. Celine nods at her. It did sound like it wasn't in the room, really. It just sounded like it was like, I think we have a magical Well, should we open it? Oh, I'm not going to not open it. All right, uh, Starla, why don't you try to stealthily open it? Yeah, I can try to, uh... I've got, I've got really deft hands, so... I'm going to have you roll a sleight of hand check to yes. open the door. You're still being guided, remember, if you need it. Um... 21. 21? Mm-hmm. You open the armoire, and there are just a few dangling hangers, shelf above it, and just a black back. That's where you must go through. Your sorcerer. Sorcerer. Your sorcerer. Okay. You can't see anything. Mm. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. Can Racket see it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, he's looking, and it's like, it's interesting. He takes a moment, and he walks to another armoire nearby and opens it, and it has a wooden background. So he kind of, like, takes a moment, and he looks out at the other one, and he's like, well, there's something different. Perhaps it is, like, that portal we went through. That led us to the place with the jaws. I'm just going to say, I I don't know that jumping into wormholes is the best use of our time at this point. We've Where got else can we go? Out. This is definitely a vampire lair. Look, all the windows are covered up. It's True. weird. True. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go poke it. Poke. You poke it? And you put your hand into it. 
and then nothing happens. The temperature's the exact same. And you take your hand out. But I put it into the darkness? Yeah. Hello, darkness, my old friend. It's time to go on you again. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little... Uh, I'm going to try to sneak in. Okay. The moment you step up, you have to kind of mm-hmm. hop onto the body of the armor and walk in. You see nothing. It is pitch black. You can see absolutely nothing. You put one hand to the left and you put one hand to the right. And you're like, you can tell it's a like five feet wide. You feel like two walls beside you and you can't quite reach the top. So you think that the ceiling might be higher, but you can feel the ground beneath you. You can't see anything. It's real dark. Uh, and you turn around and you look behind you. You can't even see your friends. Uh, can they hear me? Yes, you can hear her. I go okay, after I can't her. see anything. Um, is this something that my potion of true sight would assist me in? You don't know, but you think it could help. I'm going to drink that weird potion we got in the thing. Do Real it. quick, because I can't see anything. Do you think now is the time for that? I, 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 can't, I can't see anything, so I might as well give it a go. All right. All right. You pop it off. Glug, 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 glug. Give me. Do you still have your card? Yeah. Give me a potion. My potion. Uh, uh, twist of sights. All right. Okay, so you pop, pop in the potion of true sight. You take a moment and you blink twice and you can see. You can actually see through the hall. Oh, holy hell, I can see everything now. You take a moment. What do you see? You can see that the hall goes down about 50 feet. You can see a door on the left and the right almost evenly. But it looks like it splits and diverges off to the left and the right again, further down the hall. Okay, so it's like a 50 foot hall and there's a door on either side. Hmm. All right, should we all follow you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not going by myself. <laughs> I'm following. I, I'm following my sister, Drazilda. She's yeah. right off, right behind. So I'm right behind yeah. Starla. I'll follow up the back. Okay. I'm gonna. Um, okay. Can y'all can y'all see? Or as yeah, you guys can we walk see? in one by one by one, it is pitch dark. You can see nothing. All okay. right. I'm gonna even take, with even with all of your light, session. everything's gone. I, I'm gonna even with dark vision, you can't see a thing. I'm gonna take um some of my rope and I'm gonna um, hand I'm gonna hold one end and hand the length back to Drizilda mm-hmm. be like okay we're just gonna hold on to this so we can all stick together even though it's just a hallway but I know it's dark but I can see where I'm going cha 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 <laughs> can I have you roll a perception check since you're the only one who can see Starla 13 okay so you do catch that it splits off in the distance to the left and the right about 50 mm-hmm. feet there are two doors much closer oh wait so there's doors and then it splits off doors then it oh, splits okay. off. oh okay so at the end it splits off to the left and to the right but there's also two doors right bef- right after the doors you see two sconces too sconces sconces sconces, I said it right. scones. scones i really want a scone <laughs> 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 they're scones. Oh, there's just scones in the wall. <laughs> the wall is made of scones. Um, please make that um, happen. <laughs> there are two sconces. That would be amazing. There are two sconces that are glowing. You can see this, like, this, mm-hmm. like, blackness. Okay, there's, like, some anti-light at the end. Anti-light. I mean, it's, like, it's one of those things on the walls that holds light, but instead of radiating, yeah, mm. sconce. Instead of radiating light, it's radiating black. Mm. Just like, so you know. Now, what purpose could that serve? Filling this place with black. I D- don't know. Drusilla, should we use your pen to determine which direction to go? Good idea. Excellent idea. And sadly, no one's gonna see my lovely hair as I whip out my pen <laughs> and yes. toss my hair. Oh, Mom, I just, you know who does see it? Starla. I saw it. Oh. <laughs> Thank God, I that feel was some of it whip Thank across you. my face. Yes, it's an emotional thing, right? It's an emotional experience. <laughs> oh, pen, pen, where should we go? Starla, you're going to have to look and see which way it's pointing. Okay, you take a moment, and it's kind of like I put moving, my hand in. Mm-hmm. and it's moving like left and right. But, like, forward. Like, it's in the forward motion. But you can tell that there's, like, pacing or something happening. It's, like, kind of moving mm-hmm. in this direction. Are you thinking of Trinity? Mm-hmm. Okay. Then, yeah, it's doing that right now. Kind of moving around. All right. So I kind of, I can see where you're 
arm is pointing, I yes, guess. Yes, you can. Because I'm small, it's probably pointing I'm right probably, over my head. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm probably, like, putting it right over your shoulder. And I can feel it. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. feel yeah. it moving and lifting. All right, everyone got a hold of the rope? Yeah. Let's yes. travel together like a bunch of kids. <laughs> Done. Dun, okay, dun, 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 so you dun, dun, are going to pass dun, 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 the dun, dun. doors. You're not going to go inside. Uh, do we want to go inside any of these he says, doors? As you oh, wait, we're passing forward, doors? Yeah, there are two doors on not the other side. Not if the pen's not pointing that now, way. As yeah, you, no. as the as the pen is pointing in that direction, you pass two doors on either side. Um, the, the pen does not, like, move in that direction. You mm-hmm. do pass two doors, and you catch that. Okay, but what if the rest of the vampires are in these rooms, and they're going to jump out at us and scare us? <laughs> and suck. And try to kill us. But more importantly, you know, I have fireballs. Maybe I should go ahead of you so you're not in the way if I need to fire one. I mean, hopefully you can throw it over my head. I'm small enough, right? I would hope so, but you um, never know. Do you want to roll a perception check against the, yeah, the are doors? Yeah, are the doors open or are they shut? They're shut. And I want you to roll a quick perception check to see if, uh, if you're looking to see if they're locked or anything like that. Another 13. Yeah, you take a moment. You you can't hear anything. The one on the left is locked. The one on the right is not. You can uh, gently turn the knob. Well, this one's not locked. Should I push it open a little bit? Mm-hmm. See what I can see? Just in case. Mm-hmm. The stick is pointing this way. Yeah, but it's not just Trinity. We all know that. Mm-hmm. I know that's who we want, but... You've had very great luck with the stealth lately, yes. Take okay. a peek. I'm gonna try to gently open it. Roll a stealth check as you push it open. <laughs> <laughs> I like that laugh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. 22. Wait, no. <laughs> 24. 24? <laughs> I did my maths wrong. Oh my goodness. 24. Okay. You see three of her friends, who you had seen, who uh, fruit you had interacted with quickly at the table. They're in the corner. They're high. They're they're like they're heightened senses. You can tell that they're nervously looking around and they're looking in your direction, but they don't. They like don't see you when you're opening up the door very gently. But they look panicked. They look like they're talking. They look like they're recovering. You can hear them kind of mumbling to themselves in the corner. There's three of them in there. What are they saying? I can't hear words, but I know that they are. Looking real nervous. Mm-hmm. Do you want to throw your fireball or something? No, no. Let's, let's try to, to listen and see what they're saying first. I can only throw it once. Do I hear anything? Like, roll a perception check now. Can we all? That, um, <clears throat> Starla is the closest. God. She opened up the door and she can hear the best. You guys, oh are, my you guys gosh. are talking. Another 13 perception check. Oh my goodness. So they, <laughs> Why? they are so... They are so heightened, they are so nervous, whoever these three are, that they are whispering to one another. Like, their voices are mumbled and low. Like, they think somebody's on their tail. Or maybe and somebody saw them. They're not wrong. Um, they're just they're just mumbling and sounding real frantic. You can tell that they are also recovering. Like, they're, they're, parts of their body are singed or burned from that exposure to the sun. Should I shoot them? That might create unnecessary chaos. I mean, I think we want them dead, but I wish that Huck was here with his daylight. Ouch. Perhaps, perhaps we should just take note of their faces. Can you see their faces? Can I see their faces? They're all kind of huddled around. You you know who these people are. You've seen them before sitting okay. around the table with Trinity. Is there a way we can lock this door to trap them in there? Doesn't seem like it. This is kind of like a like a commons room, maybe. Like there's two or three chairs they're sitting on in the corner. Uh, there's an unused fireplace nearby. Uh, but there, otherwise, it's a pretty vacant room, and it doesn't seem to be of other use. Here's the thing: they decided to become vampires, right? Or maybe they were just some people can't make that decision themselves. <laughs> well, but Trinity was kind of running a like a campaign pro vampire. That's true. So. Maybe we just take note of if you can see them and you recognize them. Do you, I mean, but we all know, like, y'all know who they are. Well, we can't see them, though. I don't know. Well, yeah, but I mean, we, you saw her friends. You saw right the ones who were sitting with her. Okay. None of them were eaten, according to Huck. 
Right. And the interesting thing is too, when you cracked open that door ever so slightly, like there's a moment that you, Starla, your eyes adjusted, but there's a different sort of light inside of there. You think that something in there is more natural. More natural? Like a natural Super. light source. Uh, mm, there a very be. low lit light, but it's not like the light in the hall. And it's not like a window, it's just like a regular... Or like very, like a yeah, candle. like a very low lit, like they all have dark vision kind of thing, but mm-hmm. very faint candlelight nearby. But it's a, it looks like a normal candle, candle from the way that your eyes are adjusting. Okay, so there's a regular candle in there. It's not whatever is happening here. Um, I would feel much more comfortable if we just took them out and then made our way to Trinity. Okay, as, as you know, words going to travel very fast once. Their friends find out that they died. Well, well if not if we dead, take out their friends too, then they can't give the message, right? Exactly. Isn't that the logic of a lot of murders? You witness something, you're dead. <laughs> I'm game. I'm game. Sorry, All right. Farouk. <laughs> All right. So you guys will have a Let's sneak see, attack round on them because they are not yay. suspecting you as you cracked open the door. I have a sneak so, attack round? Yeah, you yay. all have a sneak attack round because you're all ready and prepping your actions. So you guys can do whatever you need to against them. Um, yeah. So what does that mean? We get extra. I've never done a sneak. So it just means we're all going to roll initiative order and then you guys are going to be able to get a whole round ahead of them ah, before they can even okay. act. So I get extra damage. Yeah. Correct. Damage. Yay! Natural twenty. You're You're hyped. Set. You're hyped, hyped, Kelly. Okay. And anybody above a twenty? Twenty-three. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. I don't know why I went British. Sorry. Twenty-two. <laughs> Twenty-two for Starla. Um. Okay. Sorry, I'm just reading. And then twenty-two fifteen. 15 for Celine. 15 for Celine. Andrew Zelda, what did you get? A seven. Seven. A seven. Sounds good. And then, all right, so Farouk, you're first. I am first. I have to skip past Rosilda and Celine and Starla. Yeah, so it's going to half your movement because it's taking about that. So you can only get with your, um, oh, you guys are all up at the door. So I'm going to use my Radiant Sunbolt. Okay, yeah. So your speed and everything Whoa. with that, you're pretty much, uh, what's your speed? Third. Uh, your movement? Oh, um, my movement is 35 feet. And then my Sunbolt has a range of 30 feet. Okay, so you can only get to five squares with half, well, half yeah. movement. So that's just enough to get within the room. The moment you step into the room, we're kind of guided by Starla and the rope that like has been shared. You guys were not tying, I, I think. You were all no, just, we're holding, just holding, it. holding it. So you kind of held the rope and moved forward with that way and like, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, since it was kind of like trying to just <laughs> maneuver through everything. You get to the front, you walk in through the door and you can see, and it's low lit. It's, it's um, very faintly lit, very low, but the candle is giving enough, just enough light that you can see everything in the room and you can cast your spell. I'm going to do Radiant Sunbolt, which will be... At, uh, it, does it hit all of them, or is Radiant Sunbolt one enemy hit? So... I think it might be one. Yes, it's going to be one. Which so one would you like to hit? I'll aim for the one that's farthest away from me. Sounds good, the one in the corner? In the corner. Okay. So, so there are three of them in that to room. To hit, room. that's mm-hmm. going to be... 25. Oh yeah, that'll hit, roll for damage. Ooh. And then that's Damn. going to be... Roll for damage. That Damn. didn't land. <laughs> oh, come on. So that <laughs> will be an eight points eight. of damage. Yeah, you sling back like a strong radiant symbol that hits them. Is it with radiant energy too? Cool. Yes. Okay, yes, so radiant. it's just good for me to know, generally speaking. Yes, uh, radiant damage. That's great, correct. Great. So yeah, you hit and you sling it back for eight points of damage. You, they definitely get hit as their arm kind of juts back. Okay. I can I can also spend one key point mm-hmm. to make the special attack twice. Yeah, do you want to do it again? As a bonus action. So you're gonna spend a key point and do it? Nice. Yes. So, and then I'm, 
can I aim for the other one? Yes, which one would you like to aim for? The other follow one. All right. No, the one closest, closest to me. Closest to you. Okay, you're going to sling at that one? Yes. All right. Mm, that's not going to hit. hit. Then. That's not. It's a four. Four, huh? Yeah, unfortunately, it goes <laughs> wide as it kind of crashes and hits against the backdrop there. Um, and then any bonus action, or is that it on your turn? I think that's it. All right, sounds good. We move along. Starla, you're up next. Um, I'm going to sneak in to the room as well. Yes, yeah, so you slip around for root. Uh, like, yeah, just just right around for root, and I'm gonna use my... Any particular place you wanna move to? You wanna get close to one of them, or... Yeah, is it still a sneak attack if I run up to one of them? So yeah, right now, any it, because you have, a, like, you essentially, because it's a sneak attack, I would say you would intrinsically have advantage, at least as a rogue. Okay, then um, I'm gonna use my dagger against the one closest to Farut. Oh, okay, great. Is the one right in front of you there? Um, <gasps> wait, do we get advantage on sneak attacks? Or the, the surprise round? Was that, was that what it was? They didn't know, and this is a surprise round, so yeah, I would say you guys have advantage. Okay, because I rolled pretty bad, and I wanted to make sure before I announced what my bad roll was. So my first attack is going to be 24. Yeah, that'll hit him. Roll for damage. And um, so that will be... Uh, D4, and then 3D6. I want these three. So, four plus, uh, so eight regular damage, nice. okay. and then 14 sneak attack damage. Nice. Yeah, you stab into them. This person in front of you definitely has hard flesh. It's harder to cut through with your weapons, um, but you're able to kind of slice into them as they're kind of snarling at you angrily. And I do have two weapon fighting. Yeah. So I'm gonna go at it again with again. my other dagger. Yeah, do it. Um, <laughs> 25. Yeah, that'll hit. As you like stab this person again, you remember this person. This person was Gerald. He was like a big bully. So oh. like, you're taking down bullies of bullies. Like yeah. these three are like minions of Trinity. Is and sneak attack is only on the first one, correct? Yeah. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, so then that'll be s another seven to nice. this one. Yeah, you get, you, you're like, you're just like, Gerald, <laughs> you are mean. And then as a <laughs> I saw you, I watched you in the corners. <laughs> as a bonus action, can I hide behind Farouk um, as a halfling? Yeah, I would say you could do that. Cool. Yeah. You still have some movement left too. So yeah, you can dip behind Farouk. However, if you dip behind fruit here, it might cause a little bit of movement trouble for your friends. If anyone were oh, to stand behind your arms, I'll just want to keep that in mind. Um, eh, if it, I'll stay within melee. Okay, so you stay within melee. So uh, if yeah, you don't well. move, mind moving Starla back to her spot, we have a map because it's gonna make it easier today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so that is your turn. Then we move down to Celine. I'm going to um, move forward mm -hmm. to where I can see them. So that's gonna take 10 feet of movement to move past um, uh, that's Drusilda, then another five, uh, so that's 10, 15, 20, 20, uh, and then moving past Farouk's gonna take another 10. So that's 10, 15, 15, 25. You can get just inside the room. Is that all you need? That's all okay. I need. Um, I'm going to hurl um, a firebolt. Firebolt at who? At, um, not the one near Starla, but uh, this gray one. So the one that hasn't been hit yet? Yes. All right, hurl that firebolt at it. And with advantage? Yes. 26? Oh, uh, yeah. It's real, real, uh, it's real good. <laughs> it's, it's that advantage. Yeah, I know, it's helping. 15 points nice. of damage. Wow. Um, I don't know why I did that voice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, you nap that fireball against this thing and it comes crashing against it and it's, it's pretty effective. Like right now, you guys have fought a couple times and you have a feeling that this thing definitely um, is weaker. These creatures, these, these, these hybrids of these kids now are weaker against things that are magical. Uh, things that just have, you know, uh, basic sort of wood and steel aren't really working against them the way that you would expect. Okay. I'm also going to use my bonus. Yes, what would you like to, to do? To cast my spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon! 
Out it goes. What do you uh, summon? Here's here's a little spiritual weapon if you guys need to put that on the map. It's a little glowy. Um, I'm going to keep attacking the same. Is it this dude? Uh, the other dude. This uh, dude? The, the one no, more. The that yeah. one. Okay. Um, All right. Sounds good. And with my, my glowing sword appears before him and just slashes, <laughs> slashes at him. Yes. Roll the hit. And this one's not with it. Not with it. 24. Yeah, that'll work <laughs> for damage. There's so much damage. All right, someone's already made a joke in here, too. When Erica gave me that dice, it, it, it turned things around. Sometimes Game that's all changing. you need. Good die. 12. Nice. 12 points of spirit. That's like high. That's the highest high. I could have rolled. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, really this one in the back guess. corner, you look like you've taken down half of its health. Like it's it with those two attacks alone, this thing's not looking good. And and that's radiant damage. <laughs> yes, it is. So it's definitely cutting through it like butter. All right, Drusilda, you're up. Okay. So am I in the doorway? Or do yeah, I have you to have move? to move ten more feet towards fruit. No, no, no. That's not where the door is. Fruit is in front of the door. So I lied. It's, oh. it's forced so, damage. I don't know why yeah, I thought it was. Five, radiant. ten, fifteen, twenty feet right there. Here? Yes. I can be here. So you can get in there, you just <clears throat> waste a lot, you waste more of your movement trying to push past your friend. Oh, okay. So it's fine, but you can um, get right to there if you need to. Which one looks worse? The worst one was the one that has that big spiritual weapon by it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'm gonna go, <laughs> I'm gonna shoot chromatic orbs at yeah. the one that looks the healthiest. All right, so the one in the back corner. You yeah, the one in the back ghost. corner. All right, and what kind of orb do you create? So I'm assuming it hits, it's going to be a cold, cold damage, right? Cold damage orb. All right. I see. Rolled a hit um, with advantage, I believe. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> oh, that's a nat twenty. Really? Nice. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. I'm not even roll my other. Really? Or should I just? No, yes. no. You can't get better. <laughs> you can't get better than that. Like, what if I got a double nat twenty? That would be better. Save it for the next so, uh, time. So roll for damage and then double the damage. Yes. Probably okay. This thing I'm from and I'm or. only casting it at a second level, mm -hmm. but. Um, so down, 48 plus, okay, 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 okay. Do you need another so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Um. <clears throat> so roll those four and then double, double, double. So seven, 12, 13, 14, 28, 28 plus seven is 35. 30, 28 on 4d8? They doubled. Because they doubled, because I nat 20. Oh, you doubled yeah. it. 28 plus 7, 35? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you 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 more than half this creature. <gasps> I mean, you don't yeah. decimate it, it was highest health. But can you tell can you tell me how you how this orb of cold kind of hits it with such force? With yes. such power? This thing's not looking good. <laughs> So I'm, they're crackling blue, and they're searing cold, the kind of cold that feels like fire at first, because it's so fucking cold. <laughs> <laughs> and it explodes in glassy shards yeah, you all over his face. You freeze the front of this thing, and it looks it looks like you're, you've essentially frostbited half of it. Yes. It still has energy in it. Um, you don't know which person this is. They're all riled up and on the defense for their lives right now, though. But you definitely can tell you stopped them right before. All right, that is your turn. Jason. Now back to the top of the turn, formal round. That was your surprise attack round. Farouk, it's your turn. Yes. I'm going to use Radiant again, yes. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a natural 20. Yes. Nice. <laughs> so with a nat 20, nat 20, Radiant, bolt. Roll for damage. Five. <laughs> Five, is that doubled? Oh no. So 10. 10 points of radiant damage at it. Great! As your uh, radiant bolt kind of juts out with an extra hinge on your arm as you're able to kind of get a little bit more radiant energy as this thing starts to get hit. You can tell that these are all not looking good. You guys are really whittling, whittling away at them very quickly. That's all right, my so turn. you're gonna hold on to that. Alrighty, sounds good. Starla. Uh, I'm gonna keep at this one with my dual, uh, with my two daggers. Stabby, stabby. Attack twice with my daggers. Um, okay, the first one's not gonna hit. Okay. Because I rolled a 10. <laughs> Plus what? No. Oh, 10 total. Okay. okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> um, and the second one is a 19. Oh, that'll hit. Yeah, roll for damage. Great. Six points of stabby damage. Stabby damage. Stabby, stabby. Yeah, you can tell that you're slowly whacking away at these things, but they seem charged and ready to go. Any other bonus action, Starla? 
Um, uh, I'm gonna duck behind Drizilda. Drizilda, where's Drizilda? Right behind me, right next to me. Okay, you, it's hard to duck behind her. You have little tiny halfling oh, wait, legs, and I'm there's here. people right. Yes. I can't like hide in Do between you have that the three feet of them? where you're I'm, tiny I'm, and you can I'm hide a light behind. Foot. Okay, so light what? Foot halfling. Light foot halfling's have a features and traits. Um, it should be under, uh, sorry, let me scroll down. Mm -hmm. I think you um, do. Uh, halfling nimbleness. You can move through the space of any creature that is a size larger than yours mm -hmm. and naturally stealthy. You can even attempt to hide when you're obscured only by a creature that is at least one size larger than you. Okay, so you would have to be obscured by them. So you can't, you can't step You can on attempt there. to hide even... Mm -hmm. When you are obscured only by a creature that is at least one size larger than you. Yes, but you can't you can't take up a space, so you're gonna have to move all the way behind for root. Oh, then do you no. see what I mean? Yeah. Because there's no space there; they're all crammed together. You can move through them very easily. You're very mm -hmm. tiny, but you'd have to but go I have all the to way move back. All the way back. Back into the hall where it's actual. There's actual magical darkness too, so you wouldn't be able to see. I can st I can see my true um, my true sight lasts you for can. an hour. Yeah, you can if you want to go back in the hall. I forgot about that. Yeah, I've got a short bow. I can figure it out. All right, so you're gonna go hide. Yeah, I'll right. I'll just go stand in the magical darkness of the hallway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, and you're actually right behind fruit. Yeah, so you can still see like very <laughs> faintly through everybody. Um, do you still would you still like to roll to hide since you can hide? Sure. Yeah, for a bonus who, action, right? Who is this? Yes. that's you. That's Wrecked. That's Wrecked. Oh, that's oh, Wrecked. Okay. Uh, He's gonna be in this initiative now. Twenty one. Twenty one. Yeah, you have a feeling they don't catch you. Kind of stab, stab, and then you run out. Wrecked, <laughs> wrecked, uh, like is still feeling the wall. So can you can you move him up? We'll say he'll use his full action to be like, you guys, where'd you go? He should where'd, you, have... where'd you go? I guess did we drop the rope? <laughs> yeah, I think you all ran oh, in when you dropped yeah, the that's rope fair. and <laughs> where, got where tangled. Is he going? He's just right behind Starla, and I'll say right here he kind of was feeling around and then bumps into you, Starla, right at that moment. That was his full action. Hey, Wrecked. Oh, oh, oh! I can't see anything. Yeah, that's that's the darkness. I hear action though. Something's happening. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of there's like three vampires that everyone's fighting. Okay, yeah, you guys were whispering real loud. I wasn't. Too, okay, I, I'm just gonna put my. Uh, where is your shoulder? Is that your shoulder? Is that yes. your shoulder? Yeah, thankfully that's my shoulder. Okay, good. <laughs> so you hold onto your shoulder, just like ready to go. You just tell me what to do. I'm here to help. Okay, so that is your turn, Starla. Okay, so now it is the one closest. Actually, it was the one that Starla had just fought with. It's going to step forward and go at. Um, who's right in front of them there? There Drusilda? are two people. Uh, Drusilda's Drusilda. this way and Selene is there. <laughs> it's gonna step in front of Drusilda because Drusilda hurt their friend. Uh, yeah. this is, this is Gerald. And Gerald's like, <sighs> Fuck how Gerald. dare you do that to Mikey? Um, and then he's gonna slash down at you, uh, with his multi-attack. What's your EC? 13. All right. That is going to be a 16 to hit, so that will hit. And then the 17 will hit. So he claws down at you for the nine points of slashing damage as he kind of claws at you, and then um, the second thing he does is he bites down on your on your shoulder as he takes a moment and tries to oh dear. hurt you. Hurt ya. That's going to be. Nine points of piercing damage, plus because there's necrotic, plus seven points of necrotic. So I'm damage. out. Um, yeah, you take a moment. You get knocked out. You pass out stone cold and fall to the floor as it drains you of your blood. And you can see that Gerald like licks his lips, like he was so hungry. These vampires were weak. Like they're weaker. They're not as strong, which is probably why that sun damage and also the way they're looking is not as effective. Then again, they're also not fully turned. They were just about to become maybe more flesh, more full in flesh. These are very similar to what Celine had had, where they seem stronger, but they're not exactly having the effects that, that the strongest of them would have. So would I be a quarter vampire? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that right Funny. now, but, but you definitely, unfortunately, had passed out. All right, that is its turn. The other vamp uh, in the corner, Mikey, who just got hurt by that chromatic orb, is gonna run up to uh, Celine. Oh, go for Celine. And as he runs forward to Celine, he goes, "Ah, oh, you could have been one of us. I remember you." And takes a moment and is gonna is gonna go go down. He also seems confused a little bit. Like like if he were smarter, he would put two and two together. That there's no way to reverse this usually. Um, but he doesn't care. All right. So multi attack. What's your AC? Fourteen. Fourteen. Mm -hmm. The bite. Its mouth misses you. 
doesn't isn't able to quite grab you as it looks hungry, but the claw does make leverage on you, and it's going to hit you for nine points of slashing damage as the hand kind of grazes against your uh, your shoulder and claws upward. All right, that is Mikey's turn. Celine, it's your turn. All right, um, I am going to cure wounds on my sister. So you take your hands, you put your hands on in front of your sister. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna do it at a third level. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Cause she's my sister. <laughs> so 17. Ooh, yeah, you thanks. very quickly, you feel like all of this energy and warmth runs through your body, Drusilda, as your eyes open up and you look at your sister in front of you. <sighs> Thank you. Do you suppose I'll be a vampire now? No. And with that, I uh, turn <laughs> and use my spiritual weapon. All right, so you move your spiritual weapon. Do you want to hit it, the um, same person or the one engaged with you? I am, you know, I think, hold on. I'm debating whether I want to twin it or not. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it keeps, if I do that, then I don't have enough mm-hmm. sorcery points to, to do other things if I need to later. Mm-hmm. Balancing that. Yes, yes, Feel yes, that. yes. Um, I'm just going to s- move it to the guy who just came after me, because, like... Okay, sounds good. So you kind of turn it around, and you slice down at him, roll the mm-hmm. hit. <laughs> it was like, it was like 18, and then it just went... Duck. Oh. Um... 14? Ah, oh, just misses. So yeah, you try to swing against him, but he just sees it in time and dips down. So the uh, spiritual weapon goes over his head. All right, that is his turn. Drusilda, it's your turn. You get to stand up. So I get to stand up. Yeah. And I'm going for this this one here who's now looking like he's going after my sister. Yeah, yeah, take he a moment. Me. What would you like to cast at him? So I'm I'm gonna go back to, you know, my trusty orbs. Chromio, chromio orby. Chromi orby. <laughs> Same spell? And oh, another oh, natural! Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh my god. Cold damage as well? Uh, yes, All cold right. damage as well. Roll for damage. And that will be. So and which level is this? Noises. First or second? Oh. I mean, uh, which which level spell? So this is gonna do. I'm I'm gonna keep it at a first level okay, because, like Celine, I'm saving. Yeah. So that's it'll fair. be three d eight. Nice. So, but doubled. So 10, 13, 10, 11, 12. So thirteen, twenty six. Oh yeah. Twenty six plus seven. Yeah. So this- thirty one. He's you dead. literally did almost double damage with the hit points that he had left. Yay! Yeah, you take a moment and you take Mikey. And what do you say to Mikey as you cold him up and freeze him to the point that he shatters? Fuck Mikey. <laughs> Fuck Mikey. <laughs> he just disintegrates into cold stone yes. um, from this chromatic orb from the inside out and turns into like a frozen statue and then shatters to the ground. So if you want to give me him, Mikey's no more. No more. There we are. Thank you. All right. So that is it. All right, it is now the one in the corner's turn, though, that is nearby the spiritual weapon. So he's going to run around the spiritual weapon, run forward, and go for Selene. Yeah. Of course he is. And he's going to double attack you twice. And what's your AC once more, Selene? 14. 14. Uh. All right, that is a, that the claw attack will hit. And with a 16, the bite will also hit you. So, takes a moment. He's going to claw attack you for her. Uh, five points of slashing damage as his claw kind of opens and unfurls and he slices at your back. But then his bite, he comes down and he sinks his teeth into you in your arm for six points of piercing damage. And then you can feel him like suck in your blood. This is a weird sensation. This is like odd just because you were less than 24 hours ago this thing. And just to like think about how this is how your life would be. There's a moment where you're just, you're fighting. You're fighting like the this sort of addition. Oh, uh, 11 points of necrotic damage. But halved, right? Oh. But halved, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, halved, halved. So that's only six. six. Mm-hmm. Cause you, you, yeah. yeah. You're still holding on. But yeah, I this, have defenses to radiant and necrotic. Yeah, but you can feel it's cold and you don't enjoy the sensation. <sighs> Thankfully these two are, are, are um, uh, they have one less friend now. Makes it a little easier. Trying to figure out who this person is. It just looks like a generic sort of person. A little bit further down the transitional line. Fruit, it's your turn. I'm gonna have to move around them. 
right? Yes, and it will take 10, 10 feet every square you're trying to go right now. Okay. So you can only move three squares. All right, I guess I will move here. Yes, you can get right to there, yeah. All right, you can do the one in the corner. You're cornering them. Yes. All right, roll to hit. And this time, I think I'm going to start Hold. with... I will use my unarmed strike first. All right. It's not going to hit. That's a three. All right, so that's one attack, but you have a second. Yes. You use on that bonus. Are you adding your bonuses? I think it's plus six. Three right? plus... On your attack, it says next to it. Oh, well, I mean, it still yeah. wouldn't have hit. Yeah. It would have been a nine. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just going to do the same unarmed. Secondary so, strike on the bonus yes. action. Ooh. Uh, 18. Yeah, that'll hit. Roll for damage. So that will be 1d6 plus 3. Um, 5. But you take a moment, you hit it, and you kind of get at a core spot that looks a little weaker. And you have a feeling that like you're at least starting to chop away at this thing. Starla, it's your turn. Um, I'm gonna squeeze back into that room. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna go on the other side of Celine. Okay. And I'm going to attack the uh the vampire right in front of her. Yeah, do it! With my two daggers. You got it. Kill it. <laughs> um, okay, well not I'm not gonna hit it the first time. <laughs> um uh, 17? That'll hit, yeah, roll for Okay, damage. and because I have allies nearby, that means I get sneak attack, right? Yes, if that is your oh, particular yeah, one. <laughs> okay, well that will be, uh, six, wait, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yes, six piercing damage, and then... Nine sneak attack damage. Ooh. All right, so that is a total of 15. So it's plus nine? Yes. Nicely done. Yeah, you take a moment. You step into this. Again, the, the, the body is very thick, so you're mm -hmm. feeling like you're doing not as much as you're expecting, but this one's definitely looking weaker and weaker with each, with each blow. You think that with a couple good hits more, this thing will be down. Yeah, right. and I'll stay there because I feel bad that my friends are getting hit. All right, sounds good. Anything <laughs> with a bonus action? Uh, no, I'm not going to use a bonus action. Sounds good. Uh, it is now the one near Farut and Drusilda. This one is going to kind of uh, open up its uh, claws and slash down at you, Farut, now that you are attacking it. What is your AC? 15. Oh. Well, with very low rolls, misses with the bite, misses with the claw attack. It's not able to latch onto you or get you as you're kind of <sighs> moving back and forth. <laughs> Your monk-like abilities have I, have uh, tricked it this time. Um, so now so there's a moment where like Wreckage just stumbles in <laughs> from the door behind. He's like, and he just steps next to you, and he sees you, Drusilda. He's like, you you okay? Barely. He takes a moment and he touches your hand, like your shoulder, and he sends a pulse of activity through your arm. He actually sends six healing, like energy, oh. like just like pulses it through your hand. I'm like way hands. worse off than she is. Oh, is he? Are you yeah, really? Yeah, she is. Because I, I healed her almost yeah. completely. Oh yeah. Well, then I'll say this: she yeah. almost goes to you, but then sees Celine and slowly moves yeah. to the right. <laughs> um, so that's six points of healing for you, Celine. But then he does a quick healing word and whispers it in uh, your direction. Farood's going to need a long rest after this battle. That is going to be three points of healing energy to you, Drusilda. But you take a moment and it kind of, like, you don't feel like you could surge all the way back up to full health. Unfortunately, you're capped off at 18 since that necrotic energy is kind of eaten away at you. Mm. Um, same with you, Celine. You feel like your hit points are not as high from that necrotic damage. You can feel like it suck energy out of you. I think that was three points of necrotic damage. So you're three points formally lower in your, in your max hit points um, for at least temporary amount of time. All right, that is his turn. It's like, oh gosh, they look really bad. I mean, some students don't look great, but these students are really not taking care of themselves. Thank you, Wreckage. <laughs> Drugs. And then uh, Celine, it's your turn. <laughs> um, I'm going to cure wounds on myself as well, but just at a first level. Mm -hmm. Seven points. Nice, okay, so you're feeling a little bit better, surging up, but you're probably getting close to your cap too, and you're feeling like, you can't quite heal up all the way. I still have a few more to oh, get to my cap. That's good. I have better points on my system. <laughs> okay, um, and then with my bonus, I'm going to attack this guy right near um, 
Starla with yeah. my um, spiritual <clears throat> weapon again. Yeah, roll a hit. 18? Yeah, that'll hit. Roll for damage. Five? Yeah, that spiritual weapon cuts through it like butter. Um, again, he's not looking like in great shape. Um, there's a moment that's passing that maybe another good round of rolls and you guys think that maybe, at least in this com- in particular battle, you guys have a chance. Druzel, it's your turn. Okay, I'm, because I'm going to try to conserve some of my spell slots, I think this time I'm just going to do Firebolt yeah. at uh, the one that's by Selene. That's yeah, in front Fire of Selene. Yeah, Firebolt. Yes. So, ranged attack. So that's a So yeah, that firebolt goes out hit. with a 17 to hit. You're able to crack into that thing and definitely whittle it down more. So roll for damage. Okay. So that's 2d10. 2D10. 17. 17. Yeah. I mean, that makes a heck of a difference there. Ooh. This thing is holding on with its dear life. One more blow, Still and alive? you think one more blow, and you think this thing is gone. These things have a lot of strength within them, and a lot of the hits that are things that are not magic based. You know, they take it takes a while. But this this firebolt just whoosh, kind of eats him up alive, and he kind of screams in pain. All right, but it's actually his turn in the corner. Mm. Um, so what he the one that you just hit uh, very angrily, Starla, you're right there, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna come down and lash at you now seeing that all your friends are helping out and the other ones don't look in great condition. I actually think because he's engaged with two of you, he's going to do one claw attack against you and then a bite against you again, Celine, since you're right there. Okay. All right, so what's your AC, Starla? 15. That'll hit. And then what is yours? 14. 14. That will not hit. Woo-hoo. Your bite does not hit, which makes a nice difference. But the claw does come down and it will uh, hit you, Starla, for a total of... Eight slashing damage. That's rude. Kind of rakes against your head and is able to kind of claw and hit you upside the head with its hands. Um, that is its turn. Farouk. All right. I'm going to go for the one right next to me. Okay. The one that's very weak. The one that's very weak. And I'm going to use my talon yeah. to come down and slash across his face. Roll to hit. Let's see. How well this goes. Mm, it's gonna be a nine. All right, so the first one misses, but you have a second attack. You can use like an elbow jab or like a knee kick. High jump. Roundhouse kick. <laughs> high kick. Ooh. Um, 17? Yeah, you jump and you high kick that thing in the face. Roll for damage. High kick! <laughs> Pow. Okay. <laughs> 1d6. Plus three. Ooh, eight. Eight! Still really, really good. This thing is on one hit point. You were very close to killing it, <laughs> which is why I was like, oh. But yeah, you take a moment, you jump kick, you hit this thing in the face, you like bloody its nose and it's like eating its blood. And this thing is like kind of standing with eyes that are going cross-eyed. It's just, someone just needs to finish him off. Uh, Starla. Oh, I am uh, standing next to that uh, vampire still. Yeah, the one that just got jump kicked in the face looks like it has one hit point left. Oh, well, I'm gonna hit it with my dagger. Do it! Um, with a, uh, 19. That'll hit. And because, oh, uh, yeah, because he's, uh, there's, um, fruit right there. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be eight points of piercing damage. Need eight. One hit point left. You, after fruit jump kicks and, like, hits him in the face, you take a moment and you just grab your dagger and you flip it and you just stab it in the stomach as he had been really dizzy and then he just <laughs> disintegrates and falls into ash. If you guys want to give me him, yeah. he's uh, dead. Maybe ash bodies. bodies. Ash closer. bodies. Um, and then as my second attack, yeah. Can I? Can I throw my dagger? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know how that how that uh. Uh, that well, it says worked. It's just mel- if it says melee Duck attack. out of the way, ladies. What does it, well, what does it, it say? For, so I can throw it, but it just says two-weapon fighting. I mean, that would make sense. Good, and I have one, yeah. Okay, you have so, two daggers in your hand. You can use one to stab, and you can use one to throw. I okay. Think it makes total sense. Great. I'm going to throw it at the yeah. one. Um, there's only one left, That's right? yeah, there's only yeah, one the, left. I'm going to throw it at the last one. Yeah, who's still kind of standing? About half hit points, it looks like. Kind of feel bloodied, but still ready to battle. 20. Gerald, you guys. 
22 oh. to hit. 22, yeah, that'll do for damage. And this since, is Gerald, girl. This is the bully, the leader. Uh, well, that's seven piercing damage. Right. And since um, I didn't utilize my sneak attack on the first one, can I use my sneak attack damage on the second one since Drizelda is within five feet of it? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Beat him up. Nine points of sneak attack damage. Nice. Yeah, you definitely hit hard with that one. You like you're toss, you're you toss that dang dagger like your life depends on it. And you guys now feel like the the odds are slowly gaining in your favor. These things are not easy to defeat, but you're taking them down one by one, and you're feeling more and more confident. Nice, Darla. However, it's its turn as it sees you, Drizilda, and it kind of cracks its neck both sides. It's gonna go down for attack on you now that you're back up. What is your AC? Thirteen. Thirteen. That's gonna hit for a claw attack and a nat 20 on the secondary. <gasps> oh, no. So, takes a moment. He kind of smiles and snarls at you, and Gerald kind of like lowers his voice, and he goes, it's a shame, I always thought you were pretty. And then he takes a moment, and he's going to do a claw tag against you for the first hit is 10 points of slashing damage, but then the piercing damage, the second attack is the, um, like the, the nat 20 hit. Mm. So, that is, at first, with piercing damage, this is going to be seven points of piercing damage. You're dead? Out. Not yet. I have one hit point left. Okay. That does make a big difference here. Because then the necrotic is going to be double. So. Better hope I roll low. Sorry. I, I rolled pretty, pretty low. Uh, that's seven plus... Doubled, so 14 points of necrotic damage happen to you as his arm goes so in So which your, is half. It's half to seven, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, your hit points dip another seven. Oh. So what was once capped at 18 mm -hmm. is now capped at 11. 11. Ugh, and he takes a moment so and he sucks all your energy out of you and just gets one last surge of blood just draining from you and kind of licks his lips, um, like laughing to himself in this sort of horrible way. All right. So I'm out again. She, well, so, she's yeah. passed out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. She's not dead. <sighs> so uh, that is its turn. It kind of laughs happily, knowing that maybe it's on its last leg. But uh, Rekid takes a moment, and he's, like, pretty freaking angry. Uh, I think uh, Rekid's going to take a moment. Oh, but but you're right down right in front of him. So he doesn't even care. He like, <laughs> takes a moment. He's like He, like, gnarls his teeth, but he's like, oh, screw it. So he's going to dump a cure wounds into you gonna surge you up 15 points you to the second level um but as he kind of knocks you back in that blood comes back to you as you can breathe again um you you don't feel like your hit points can like you, there's a moment that your energy feels weaker you feel more tired you feel more exhausted and you're, you're you feel like the blood has left your body like you have to regenerate more blood almost you don't feel great um so that is his turn um, he also has, he looks around, is anybody Thank else you, damaged? Severely damaged? No. I mean, I'm damaged, not right. severely. He's Stay. gonna throw a little healing word in your direction just to make sure you're okay. That's gonna only be uh, four points of uh, healing energy, but he kind of says, feel better, Celine. We gotta get through this. Uh, okay. All right, Celine, it's your turn. All right, I am going to hurl a firebolt. Do it. At him. Yeah. 13. Doesn't hit, unfortunately, but but my spiritual weapon spiritual is behind weapon. him, and you mm -hmm. rolled a hit on that. It's a good wide. Oh, using my last uh, luck. Luck. <laughs> as I roll another one. Where is it? Here. Okay. Do better. <laughs> 18. Yeah, that'll hit. Roll for damage. <laughs> 10 points of damage. Yeah, that that sword comes down against his back and slices again into him like butter. When it hits right, it hits right. You think that this creature with one good magical attack left, this thing is barely keeping its form. And he's he's so angry, he was expecting, and he sees Drusilda's eyes pack back up and you see him lift his foot like ready to stomp down on her. Oh. Um, however, Drusilda, it's your turn. Mm, okay. Do you stand up? <clears throat> um. It's yeah, probably good too. Because he's about to crush you with his yeah. foot. I stand up. I'm... How will you end him? Mm. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking. Um, I'm gonna create a bonfire. 
I just want to light him on fire. Okay. Like right where he's at, if he can. So he has to make a deck save against my 15. Deck save? Interesting. Yeah. Pull up his stats real quick. Deck save. Oh, fire is a spell. Yeah, it's a cantrip I have. Wow, he has but I'm a not usually... plus six on a deck save, but rolled a five, so only 11. Oh, then it'll get him. Yeah. And so now he takes 2d8 damage. Nice. And fire damage? Be, yeah, so that'll be a seven fire damage. Nice. Yeah. You... Wait, uh, how much again? Seven? Seven, yes. And the creature must also make a saving throw when it moves, uh, when it starts its turn or ends its turn there. Yeah, this, he, he looks like he's burning alive. He's screaming in pain. Good. Fruit, it's your turn. Are you going to be the one to do it? I will do my Radiant Sunbolt again. <sighs> Roll to hit. <laughs> Natural. 20. Nice. Oh my gosh. You only had five yes. hit points left, so let's see what you roll on this right. one. What are you gonna say to Gerald? Na 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 na, na 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 na. Hey hey hey. <laughs> Goodbye, Gerald. And with that, he is vanquished, and the room is quiet. Next time on the broadcast, save yourself. If nobody move. I'll come back. What if we just throw it in the room and see what happens? Should we get rid of his eyes? Get rid of his eyes. Uh, I think I'm the one asking the questions here. Hey, I'm Kimberly Daugherty, and I play Celine Tessar. Hello, I'm Ali Gonino, and I play Farut Ajalik. Hi, my name is Alice Gretchen, and I play Drizilda Slendron. Hi, I'm Erica Fermina, and I'm playing Starla Hahill. Hi, my name's Rachel Seeley, and I am playing Huck Lokley. And I'm Kelly Lynn D'Angelo, your dungeon master and woman of many faces, creatures, and things unknown. I'm Richard Quiner, and I produce this podcast in partnership with Wizards of the Coast.